So as we come to the end of the decade, I figure, uh, let's look at the worst movies of the year. If you're watching this, it's probably 2020. Um, I'm actually recording this on the 30th, a few days before 2020 starts, for a few reasons. One, I'm bored. Two, I'm tired as shit and I've got to stay up for the next few hours. And three, I just, it just seems so appropriate because it is just like, it's a shitty looking day, it's fucking raining, it's cloudy, it's ugly, and I look like this, wearing my fucking hoodie, I just, I look like shit. And what better way to talk about some shitty fucking movies. So we're going to look at my worst movies of the 2010s decade. No freaking script, no big editing, no music, none of that bullshit. These movies don't deserve it. This is just one big final kick in the ass to the movies I fucking waste my time on. So we'll be going in alphabetical order and basically the only rule I got is uh, they had to piss me off. So there are movies that maybe are terrible, just completely fucking terrible, but I'm not gonna put them on here because I didn't get that angry at them. There are a few where I'd say was my anger that high? No, but they are just so Bad. In this video, you will not hear me mention any of the films that won Worst Picture. I'm doing a whole video series on that in March, where I look at my wor the best and worst winners of the decade. A few of them would have been on here, and I'll mention them when we went at the end of the videos when I do that. We're just gonna get into it. So first up, what better way to start than with 9/11? Just a misguided movie, a film that I think tried. It wanted to do something. It was based on a play, although apparently they changed the ending to the play, I heard. Like, in the end of the play, the guy lived. They, they all lived. And in this one, that ending where it's just Charlie Sheen fucking dies just to pull on your heartstrings. And then that just infuriating last title card where it's like dedicated to all those who lost their lives just infuriated me and I don't oh my god it just felt like the biggest insults Charlie Sheen is incredibly miscast it's boring as hell it's just five uninteresting people stuck in an elevator it barely has anything to do on 9-11 you could have set this in just a regular building that was on fire and they were trapped. I mean, most of the a other actors are fine. The kid's terrible, but like, the other four in the elevator, they're perfectly okay. This next one, Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter. I barely remember a damn thing about this. I remember it kind of looked cheap. It was dull. It took itself way too seriously. It's a movie called Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter, and from what I've heard, the book is really good, and it also took itself seriously to the point where you're wondering, like, is that what happened? This one was just dull, and there's n the guy they got playing Lincoln was boring. Only part I thought was actually any fun was the final part on the train. That part was cool. It's just a generic vampire movie, plus you got the freaking Beck Memetov slow-mo, fast-mo bullshit. Here we go. The Atlas Shrugged Trilogy. The worst film series of the decade. The first movie is one of the most dull-looking films I've ever seen. I mean, it looks like it should have been a TV movie in, like, the mid-90s. It is so dull to look at. The actors have no emotion. It is... It is a boring looking movie. Its ideologies are horrifying. Our main hero tries to force her workers to go on a s train that she doesn't know is safe. And then when the unions come in, she's like, fine, I'll do it. And it's treated like some grave injustice. The second one does have more energy. It looks better. The acting is better. Even worse morally, because th that courtroom scene is one of the worst scenes. Like, I've ever seen in a movie. And the third one is one of the most pathetic films ever made. Like, it... Like, I almost feel bad for it. It's like it's trying so hard to be something and failing miserably. Nothing. Like, it does not feel like the ending of this big trilogy. It doesn't feature one of its big characters. It's so 
bad. I hate all three of these movies so much. I hate them. Hate, hate, hate them. And yes, I absolutely burn those motherfuckers like discs and all. I guess we gotta get some uh, Happy Madison movies. Um, and first up, we got Bucky Larson, Born to be a Star. That's the only way you can say it, because it is just one of those movies. The main character is so stupid and so annoying that you just... I don't want to see him. I don't... I want him to go away. Like, he's unappealing to look at. Nick Swartz, and God bless him, he's trying, but the character is just... Everything you don't want to watch in a main character. It's incredibly mean-spirited. Like, just a very mean movie. Everyone treats him like shit, makes fun of his small dick. There's no plot. It's just him going and becoming a fucking porn star because of his small dick. Not in spite of it. Because of it. Because the world is fucking stupid. Christina Ricci's really good in it. She's very charming. She's like places girlfriend who's like, way too good for him, <laughs> who wants to be a waitress. Uh, Cinematic Extrament has a great review on this, if you can find it on his Vimeo page. It's just a terrible movie. There aren't really that many Happy Madison movies. Most, I haven't seen a lot of them, but stuff like Grown Ups 2 and Pixels, like, what am I gonna say? I, I couldn't get that angry at them. Bucky Larson, born to be a star, definitely just fucking infuriated me. It's not funny. Uh, speaking of not funny, Cop Out. Uh, this one's just obnoxious. It's better than Bucky Larson, Born to be a Star, but it's not good. It's easily, in my opinion, Kevin Smith's worst movie. At least Yoga Hosers. I mean, it was different. <laughs> like, Cop Out is everything bad about the worst buddy cop movies with none of the charm. The two leads don't have much chemistry. The action isn't good. It's not funny. Contrived as hell. And Sean William Scott has just got to be one of the most obnoxious characters I have ever seen. Alright, this one. This is definitely one of those. I wasn't too mad, but it's just so awful that I had to put it on here. Dancing, it's on. I watched this on Netflix in 2016, so about a year before Cinema Snob reviewed it, and it is, it's something special, like, you, movies just shouldn't be made like this, especially not in the 21st century, where it's like, it really is like the Manos of the 21st century, because everything is 80 yard. Granted, it fits better than Manos, but, like, you'd have to fail spectacularly to fail, to not have it <laughs> be worse than Manos in 2015. Everything sounds off. The acting is awful. Just no one is good. The dancing's good, I'll give it that much. It's got like actual like professional dancers, but the characters are kind of stupid. It's generic. <laughs> Nothing really makes sense. The editing is awful. It's so bad that it's kind of hilarious. First, uh, like half of it, maybe three quarters, but after a while it's like, oh my god, will this just fucking end? Like, this is just getting grating. Uh, here we go, The Devil Inside. The worst found footage movie ever released to theaters that I've seen. For the most part, it's just a very generic exorcism movie with no good scares, they're all predictable. Uh, okay acting, but generic characters. As a found footage movie, like, there's scenes where they're showing, like, security footage where you should be able to see the cameraman and you don't. Uh, I think Film Brain actually po pointed that out in his review. Like, it's just not a very well-made found footage movie. Like, it's not that hard. Like, you're allowed to make mistakes in found footage movies because that kind of adds to the realism. This one was too like, professional, and it made it worse. And then there's the ending, which I heard was coming, but it was so jarring that even if you know it's coming, you're not prepared for it. You're like, no. This can't be where it ends. Like, they have, there has to be something missing. Uh, next up, the dinner. Just ugly. Ugly people. Not, fi not physically, just awful human beings. 
everyone in this movie is a terrible person, which is kind of the point, but they're not enjoyable to watch. Like, you don't want to watch them. You want them to go away. You don't even want to see them die. You don't want to see them get any, any comeuppance. You just want them to go away because they are so fucking hateable. I know some people don't like the word pretentious, but this movie is just full of itself. It thinks it's so smart and so deep when it's not. It goes into long tangents about Gettysburg. Gettysburg has nothing to do with this story. It's about this these parents whose son is a little fucking monster and they're trying to protect him. And then it'll just go on these 20 minute tangents about fucking Gettysburg and it makes no sense and I... Oh god, I hated that movie. I just hated it. The acting's pretty good, I'll give it that much. Uh, next up, here we go, Escape from Tomorrow. Some jerk with a camera has a great video on this, watch that. Three parts, uh, this is a horrible movie, supposedly about how evil of a corporation Disney is. I'm not gonna say Disney doesn't have its problems, but this movie is not a good example of pointing out its freaking flaws. It is so just like the dinner, full of itself, just thinks it's saying something so new, so different, that you don't, you could see in like, silly comedies, like National Lampoon's Vacation, because it's just like, oh, you're trying to get an escape and have fun, it's forced fun, and it's actually making you miserable, it's like, no fucking shit. The whole freaking gimmick with it was that it was actually filmed at Disney parks. Oh my god, this was filmed at Disney! I mean, you're, you're allowed to film at Disney, I think, I'm pretty sure, I mean, unless all those people who do it are on YouTube are doing it illegally, like, I don't know, but you're allowed to film there, and it's, it's really not that impressive, and even taking it into account, like, this, there's stuff, like, I get they're filming it guerrilla style, but there's scenes where they could have easily used a tripod. They have awful green screen, just terrible green screen. I just hated this family. I hated all of them. The dad was a perverted, just pervert. He's a pervert. The mom's a bitch. The two kids are just nothing. They're freaking nothing. They yell at each other. It reminds me of like the worst family vacation you've ever been on. And then there's these whole just stupid weird shit it gets into with like the Siemens Corporation taking over and it's like what the fuck is even the point? Is Disney even at fault for most of these problems? Like, it seems Disney's not really that big a deal in this story. Fuck that movie. Alright, I'm putting these next two together. Fifty Shades Darker and Fifty Shades of Black. Fifty Shades of Grey obviously can't get on here because uh, it won Worst Picture and I'm not putting any of those on here, but... Fifty Shades Darker is just the worst. It, it's, it's worse in every way. Every single aspect that the first movie did wrong is worse here. Uh, the acting is worse. The abuse implications are worse. It's more boring. Like, less shit happens. Like, there's... This movie really doesn't have much of a plot. Like, it really doesn't. Anytime it tries to have something happen, it'll immediately get resolved. Like, there's this crazy ex that Christian has who keeps following Anastasia and she... When they finally confront her, he uh, talks to her off screen and then she's gone. And uh, what else happened? Like, there's a helicopter crash. Christian gets lost in a helicopter crash and they're worried. And then, like, two minutes later, he shows up and then nothing else. It's just a terrible, terrible movie. But even the stuff that was good in the original, because I hold that there were good things. Like, the first film looked really good. This movie just has no atmosphere. It's. I mean, it's shot competently, but nothing, it has no atmosphere. Uh, the music was good in the first one. Everything in this sounds awful. It came out in 2017, the worst year for pop music. So, of course, it all sounds droning and shitty. The sex scenes I thought were pretty good in the first movie. They're terrible here. The only thing that was good in both this and the first movie, and did carry on to the third movie, was, uh, what's her, uh, Dakota Johnson. Dakota Johnson as Anastasia Steele is really good. Fifty Shades of Black is just an unfunny comedy. It's 
it's stupid, but stupid in just the worst ways and that it's random nonsense that thinks it's gonna get laughs because it's making fun of something people hate. There are a few points where I chuckled because, I mean, it just keeps throwing jokes at you, so eventually you have to freaking laugh. But most of the jokes are those mean-spirited jokes, which some might like. I, I don't, there are plenty of mean-spirited jokes and humor that I like, but this is all just like making fun of this woman. They keep making fun of her because she's like, they say she's ugly and like fat and it's like, she's not. She's like a pretty, she's really pretty and she's just a very unfunny comedy. Okay, so I was literally just finishing up editing on this and I realized I forgot The Haunting of Sharon Tate. This actually is the second one I forgot, and you'll see the other one I forgot a little later. I actually filmed it before, so, uh, yeah. So, I'm just splicing this in, but The Haunting of Sharon Tate is a movie that is boring. It's not scary. It's not thrilling. The acting is bad from everybody, but Hilary Duff just somehow manages to be the worst. It's not well made, the camera keeps moving around, and then it ends with probably the most insulting climax I've seen in years. Like, I don't understand how this movie got it so wrong, where uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood got it so right. <laughs> this movie just, it's offensively bad, and I can't believe I forgot about it, and at this point, if I forgot anything else, I'm not bothering. They obviously weren't worth remembering. So, uh, yeah, back to daylight. Next up, The Host. None of the Twilight movies are on this list, uh, but The Host, that one, that one's awful. That one is everything bad about Twilight with none of the good stuff and everything bad is worse. Boring to look at, it's, I mean the cinematography is good, but it is boring to look at. It is mostly brown. Like, it is just brown. The, you think of the movie, you think brown, and I don't like looking at it. The acting is bad, but Shersha Ronan, oh my god, she is, it's amazing that she would later go on to freaking Lady Bird and Little Women. It's like, how do you go on from this to that? Because she is awful. She has to play two characters. One, this stoic freaking alien. And then as her goddamn uh, inner monologue. And she sounds awful. Like, it's terrible. It's all voiceover. And she proves that she cannot voice act. It's boring as hell. Very little happens. And then you get into the weird kind of rapey vibes. I mean... She is, this alien took over this girl's body and she's falls in love with another guy who's not the real girl's boyfriend. So you're kind of just like, Ugh. and they're kissing and they're kind of thinking about sex and it's like, this is a little creepy. In my opinion, it is far worse than Twilight. I would watch all five movies and yes, that includes Breaking Dawn Part 1 back to back to back to back to back over watching the host again. Alright, next up, I Frankenstein. This is a nothing movie. This movie has no point. Like, it is a movie that sets up its plot and goes through it. It never attempts to engage you. It, j it doesn't attempt to give good characters. It doesn't attempt to give character development. It doesn't try to immerse you in the world. It doesn't try to make the plot interesting. It just puts you... In this story, and they go through it, and that's it. Aaron Eckhart is fine, but the action scenes, I just remember them being really badly edited. It's like they would cut, like, a frame before, like, something would hit, and then cut, and it's already past where the point of impact was. Like, I can't remember a damn thing about this movie. This was, I, th I think, is this, was this part of the Dark Universe, I think? Like, this was one of their tr attempts to try and start the Dark Universe, and they just kept failing at it. Uh, Left Behind, the 2014 version. I've never seen any of the other ones. This movie is so lifeless. Like, it is lifeless. It is a boring movie. Every actor is just nothing. It is like the 
barest you could do to even consider it acting. Like, Nick Cage, he's a freaking pilot on a plane where everyone, where half the passengers and his co-pilot disappeared. There was, there's freaking fuel leaking out of the engine, and he just talks like this all the time. Like, uh, like he's more annoyed than he is, like, scared or in panic. Not well made. Like, just every thing about this movie is horribly directed. There's not... And there's, this is like the most tame rapture you could ever see. Both Cinematic Excrement and Cute Fuzzy Weasel have great reviews of this. Uh, also, I Hate Everything has a good review, and he actually brought up something that I really don't want to just assume, but the fact that there was a Muslim guy, like, on that plane who didn't get raptured, even though he's a perfectly decent dude, very devout in his faith, and just the fact that he gets left behind, just... That's some very bi bigoted shit right there. Next up, Let There Be Light. Uh, just watch Jesus, bro. It's a way better movie. Some of the worst child acting you'll ever see. <laughs> like, the two kids are awful. It's a bigoted movie. Like, it, it doesn't think you should be allowed to s ever be anything besides, like, a very devout Christian. If you're an atheist, you're just a fucking asshole. If you're a Muslim, you're part of ISIS. Like, you're just, that's it. Like, that's the only thing. You are either a Christian, an atheist, or part of ISIS. Kevin Sorbo and his wife had good, had good chemistry and their acting was good, but this movie just made me feel wrong. Okay, so I was just uh, editing and I realized I forgot to put the loft. Like, I forgot to mention the loft, and I was like, how could I forget to mention the loft? Because, goddamn, that movie is a piece of shit, so I'm just rec recording this part. Uh, the loft is one of the most just unlikable movies you'll ever see. It is horribly acted, and Every character is an asshole. Every single one of them. The dudes are assholes who cheat on their wives. The wives are a bunch of uh, bitches. They treat people like shit. The mystery itself is just not interesting. And when it finally is revealed, it's like, okay, who fucking cares? It's not well made. The editing is bad. The music is just not good. And apparently it's so forgettable that I completely forgot to put it on my list, which just seems so odd for a movie that I hated so passionately. The only positive thing, like I said in my worst of 2015 video, at least it's like even in its awful depictions of the sexes, like men will hate it, women will hate it. It's like it can bring everyone together. Fuck this movie. Anyway. Uh, here we go, Mr. Right. Just obnoxious. It's an obnoxious movie. It follows two of just the worst characters you will ever see, like this pretentious ass hitman who doesn't kill who he's told to kill and then kills the people who ordered the kill because killing is wrong. And then just the most freaking stereotypical millennial you'll ever see. Like this. Anna Kendrick's character is straight up millennial blackface. Like, I wanted to just go out and punch myself and every other millennial I find. Decently shot action scenes with no tension because there's no because they, they can't get they can't die they can't get hurt they they have superpowers. The bad guys are just the dumbest people on the planet, and it's just full of douchebag humor. And if you want more, you can see my review. <laughs> Norm of the North. Uh, this is sort of in the dance in its on levels where my anger isn't that high towards it, but this movie just didn't belong in the- it doesn't belong on DVD either. Like, it's not good. Every decision made in this movie is stupid. Like, Norm is stupid. He's a stupid character. He causes his own fucking problems because the villain was so dumb that his plan would have failed until Norm came along and made him more popular. The lemmings are just awful. I hate them. I hate them so much. Like, it's only funny, ironically, like, there are maybe a few chuckles here and there, like, genuinely, but for the most part, it can only be in laughed at, like, 
because it's so shitty. But even then, like, by the halfway point, it just becomes insulting to the point where I'm like, oh my god, I f just shut up, just end, just please, no more. Uh, I did see the next two sequels. I don't know how many there are at this point. But I saw the other two on Netflix, and honestly, they're bad, but I don't think they're as bad as this. Granted, I was drunk during both of them, but I don't know. I, I kind of liked his kid. Maybe it's just because he's voiced by Terramar from MLP, but I don't know. I kind of liked his kid, and they're terrible, but everyone's talked about it. Like, you can just look up Norm of the North rant or review, and you'll find stuff from freaking... Animat, the Nostalgia Critic, Cell Specs, Mr. Enter, everyone's done something on Norm of the North, and for good reason, it just gives you plenty of material. And another one that kind of goes into that not that high on my hate meter but just so incompetent, The Oogie Loves in The Big Balloon Adventure. And so I saw this movie, like, shortly after it came out on DVD, like, it was on Netflix, and... It is just everything, it's just the worst stereotypes of like a kid's movie because it condescends to them, gives them kind of terrible lessons under the guise of entertaining them. Like when they have to get these balloons, they'll climb up freaking trees that are stories high, a freaking plane, uh, they'll climb up a windmill, like talk to strangers, it gives terrible advice for kids. And it just treats them like the dumbest fucking things. Like, I, it has them repeat everything, like, twice. It has them get up and dance, because that was going to be a thing that you want to do in a movie theater. Again, it can be funny for, like, the first half, and then you just, like, oh my god, please fucking stop. I just want it to stop. Uh, this is the only direct-to-Netflix movie on the list, and I think might be the only one that actually stars Adam Sandler, uh, The Ridiculous Six. Uh, like I said, I couldn't get that mad at stuff like Pixels or the Grown Ups movies, but The Ridiculous Six pushed all my buttons. I fucking hated this movie. It's, it's not funny. Like, there is legit one laugh I got out of it. I'll spoil it for you right now. Like, Sandler's just trying to hitch a ride with someone, and, he, and they ask, like, where's your horse? And he just, like, he died. And they ask, how? Suicide. And that was, like, the only joke I laughed at. Sandler's character is a Mary Sue. Like, he is, he could do anything. He's a fucking superhero. The fact that he doesn't just freaking save the day within seconds is a point against the movie. The other five of the Ridiculous Six are all annoying. You got Taylor Lautner playing a fucking just... Dumbass. Rob Schneider and his fucking bull, uh, not bull, donkey that shits, like, project projectile shits. The guy from Lost plays, like, a guy who can't speak. It's way too long. Like, this thing, I think, is over two hours. Easily could have cut out a half hour. Like, there's a scene where they're playing baseball by, like, the guy who invented baseball, and it's like, so when he's losing, he'll make up new things, like, it's originally supposed to be two strikes, but then it's like, oh, another strike, uh, uh, I'm in three strikes, uh, it's so fucking stupid, and, I and then at the end, like, this whole thing they were doing was to get money for their dad, and then their dad turns out to be an asshole, so the whole thing was completely pointless, yeah, Vanilla Ice is Mark Twain, F fuck this movie. Uh, next up, Robin Hood. Not the 2010 version, the 2018 one. Uh, starring Taron Edgerton and others whose names I don't remember. This movie, this movie was bad. Like, it's just, it's horribly shot, horribly edited, the acting isn't good. Like, it's probably just, what, like, I don't even have anything, like, really interesting to say about it. Everything about it was just kind of bad. Like, I didn't like watching it. It just bored me, it annoyed me, it made me want to quit watching. Uh, next up, Season of the Witch. You probably don't remember this one. It had a pretty decent jump scare at the beginning, but then the rest of it was just this very cheap-looking movie with, like, no chemistry between the two leads. It was... just... 
it was boring. Like, it was just a fucking boring movie, and I don't remember enough about it to even comment much on it. You don't remember it. Why should anyone else? <laughs> Show dogs. <laughs> this movie's stupid. This movie's just... It almost kind of gave me a nostalgia blast to, like, the worst kids' movies I would have watched in, like, the early 2000s. Because if that's what it feels like. It does not feel like a bad kids' movie from 2018. It feels like a bad kids' movie from, like, 2004. Quick editing, wide-angle lenses, getting close up to characters' faces, way too much CG, just does not fit. Plot is stupid. Like, it's these... This dog has to go join this show dog so he can find out, so he can get captured and then find out who stole this, like, panda, the, that fucking terrifying CG panda. And, like, he has to cheat to win, which pisses off, like, the other dogs, even though he know, they know he has to win to save the panda. Really uncomfortable scenes, like, I didn't see the ball-touching one, but, uh, they almost tried to force the main dog to have sex with another dog, and then they're like, oh, no, uh, that's, uh, you can't force someone to love, uh, someone they don't, and it's like, why is that in this movie? Like, you know, have these weird adult jokes, just, uh, but the, uh, the human actors were okay, and the dog actors, when they weren't CG, were pretty decent. Uh, next up, Skyline. I reviewed this. It is a boring sci-fi movie, mostly set up in this one apartment while much more interesting shit is going on outside. I'm not interested in these people. I don't really care about them. It's takes itself way too seriously. It's a big problem when the movie is so stupid. Like, there's tons of, like, little things that don't make sense. The special effects are pretty damn good for a low-budget movie, but there's just no... there's no fun to be had. It's just a dull, lifeless movie. And it also just... It, it's derivative. It takes stuff from, like, every big sci-fi movie released 20 years before, from Independence Day, District 9, Transformers, Signs. They actually did make a sequel. I watched it on Netflix. It's actually kind of alright. It was so much better than the first. It just, it's not amazing, but it's a nice little f distraction. Alright, let's, oh god, this one. Fucking Spy Kids 4D all the time in the world. I'll give the movie this, unlike a lot of films on this list, it has a lot of energy. Like, it tries to do sh to have a lot of big, elaborate, fun scenes, over the top shit. The first three Spy Kids are huge guilty pleasures of mine. I actually rewatched them recently, and they are definitely childish, but there is sort of this cartoony quality to them like they're just they just embrace that and have fun with it this movie has no charm like it's every joke is either toilet humor or a time pun like the bad guy like his whole thing is time the bad guy, he's not a bad guy like like in the other three they kind of weren't awful people and they ended up turning good by the end but this guy he just he wants to spend time with his dad, and, like, he's going about it the wrong way, but I can't be mad at him. That stupid robot dog just infuriated me. The editing is awful. It's... The CG's the off... Just as bad as it was in, like, the other movies, except this came out ten years later. Uh, and I'm really thankful that Rowan Blanker later went on to do Girl Meets World. A Media Wiz has a great video about this. Like, go watch that. The only like, positive thing were Carmen and Junie. We get to see them again, and when it was just those two interacting, it was fun. Like, it was nice to see them again. Uh, a thousand words. This movie is contrived as hell. The whole thing is Eddie Murphy bonds with this tree because magic, and so every time he says a word, a leaf falls down, and uh, the more... And once all the leaves are gone, he dies. Okay, there's like a thousand leaves left, a thousand words. Makes sense, fine. He continuously puts himself in situations where he is forced to talk. Like, 
he'll go get coffee. And it's like, don't get coffee. There's no reason to get coffee. He goes to work. Like, I'd understand if he was forced to, but he he doesn't even try to call off. Like, yeah, it would take a few words to call, to call, but that none of that it shouldn't fucking matter. He continuously will put himself into these situations where he has to talk and it was pissing me off. And the message doesn't really work with this movie. The whole thing is he's an he's a sort of a workaholic dad, uh, which you know I fucking love, but <laughs> like the whole thing is he, he, he sort of learns to not be a workaholic dad, but I don't know how. The message and the freaking curse don't mix. The last act has some of the most heartbreaking, emotional stuff you will see in an Eddie Murphy movie. Like, it was actually really sad. So why the fuck wasn't the rest of the movie like that? Alright, we only have a few left. Uh, Winchester, it's a, it's a not scary movie with... No atmosphere, it's generic. Probably my biggest problem, it just doesn't take advantage of the location. I mean, the Winchester house, it has so many different rooms that you can get lost in. Hallways and doorways that lead to nowhere. And it's like, it could have been really creative, and it just wasn't. Oh, <laughs> Winter's Tale, a freaking just full of itself once again, just like the dinner, like, I hated watching this. I hated its pretentious dialogue. I hated the pretentious acting. I hated the pretentious story with its stupid flying horse that thinks it's so much bigger than it actually is. It wants to be this big, epic, epic movie, but it doesn't feel like it. It's not directed in a way that makes it feel epic. It's just a boring, dull, pretentious piece of shit. It looks nice, but it doesn't do much else. And finally, Wonder Park. Just oh, annoying movie. Just absolutely annoying. The characters never shut up. Like, they don't stop screaming. They don't stop talking. Even when it's characters talking to each other, there's no pauses in between them talking. It is obnoxious. I it's not creative like it's a movie supposed to be about like the wonders of imagination and it's not creative there's no imagination in it the plot's generic the characters are generic the jokes are generic the park itself is just it's a freaking like regular fair with a bunch of rides a bunch of spinning rides like a roller coaster stuff like that like they're not creative and then there's just the Awful implications about grief and death and I, I don't even really want to get into it. The animation and voice acting are pretty good. The score is good. But the story is... If it didn't have that animation, if it didn't have the talent behind it or the money behind it, it would, have been, it would be just as horribly regarded as freaking Norm of the North. And that's it. So, uh, join me next week and the next two weeks after we'll be doing my 30 favorite movies of the 2010s. What were your worst movies of the decade? Which ones pissed you off the most? Uh, leave a comment and my voice is starting to go out. So, uh, see y'all next time. Bye.